Next, we're going to install PowerPivot for SharePoint into the farm. SQL Server 2012 SP1, and there's a really important change to the way PowerPivot works, or at least the way it can work. In previous editions with uh, SQL Server 2008 R2 and the RTM version of SQL Server 2012, the PowerPivot service had to be installed on a server that was joined to the SharePoint farm. So that would be one of our application servers that we've installed. Beginning with 2012 SP1, we can actually install the PowerPivot service on a database server that is not part of the farm. This is really exciting because sometimes we might have a SharePoint farm that we don't want to modify or we don't want to put PowerPivot into that farm, but we still want Excel workbooks within the farm to use the services that PowerPivot brings. And that's exactly the use case that this is for. So that's how we're going to install PowerPivot initially in this farm, is we're going to install it on an external SQL 2012 database server that is not part of the SharePoint farm, or is not a member server of the SharePoint farm. Now to do this, the Excel services will only need the name of the server running PowerPivot for SharePoint, which is great. The SharePoint farm on BI accounts, uh, they do need to be administrators on the PowerPivot for SharePoint in service, meaning the analysis services uh, instance that's running on that external server, because instead of having the SharePoint be the trusted intermediary between analysis services and SharePoint, um, we're just essentially giving the SharePoint services the control themselves. And they will accomplish the equivalent of Kerberos delegation by using an effective username function that is, is new with the product in SP1. Now, of course, we don't have to do this. We, we could install the PowerPivot service within a member server, just as we did in previous versions. And the configuration, if we did that, would be you know, virtual, virtually the same. So the server we're going to install this on is uh, SPDB3. Now, before we get too excited and, and start installing, we've got to install the .NET uh, 3.5 from the Windows Feature Installer. This is required because in Windows 2012, by default, this isn't going to be installed. Uh, the SQL installer won't initially know that, so you can actually get quite a ways down the installation process before your installation eventually fails because this prerequisite is not available. Once that is done, then we just run the SQL installer on uh, SPDB3 and install this almost just like any uh, analysis services instance. We will use the, the service SPDB account to run the analysis services instance so we'll kind of be true to the separation between database and SharePoint and then as we're installing that right within the install process we can make the the two service accounts that need to be administrators uh, instance admins on this instance as we as we do it so we'll, we'll do that as well and then also don't forget to make yourself an administrator it's uh, it is certainly possible to install this product and, and essentially lock yourself out of it so just be mindful that you have at least one administrator that uh, that can that can use it when you're done. SQL Browser should be running on that server. PowerPivot will be on a named instance so make sure that browser is running before you get too far down the path and then if Windows Firewall is running and I, I hope it is on your server and you'll just need to open some ports so that the uh, SharePoint farm can actually talk to the analysis services instance that you created. And then once all of that is done and the PowerPivot instance is installed on that external server it's simply a matter of going into Excel Services configuration and adding the instance name to the Excel Services application setup. And from that point, you should be able to upload PowerPivot workbooks and they should work. So let's get started.